Hey guys, it's the little guy. I haven't done a video in a while, so I thought I'd just show you what I'm working on. Forgive me for the lighting and my messy table. There's shite everywhere. Um, I've noticed on the internet, especially as I'm restoring these three engravers, that there's not much information on pantograph engraving. There's a few like, hey, I'm using the old pantograph engraver and I'm just putting in your your little um, pre-made up numbers and letter stamps and just tracing away, but there's no real show of how it works or what you're looking for, how to restore it, that sort of thing. So this is a Gravograph uh, TX3, I believe, and it does have a motor. Sitting over here. Yep, a massive vise. It's huge. The vise can hold like a wheel rim so you can grab a wheel rim if you're that keen. This is one of pretty much the biggest one that they came out with uh, for Gravograph. And the thing about this one is the top pantograph here that isn't mounted, obviously. It's fucking meant to be over there. It doesn't move. It's not, it doesn't raise or lower. You have to raise the platform from down here. It's got its own little jack and runs up and down these rusted ass poles. But... Because of that, this makes it so rigid, um, you get really good engravings from it. The more rigid it is, and the less play there is, then the higher the quality of your engraving is going to be. So the thing with this one, and I'll do a better one when this is all back together, but I just wanted to show you some of the things that I've found along the way that people need to know if you've ever got one of these, or you've got one in your pop shed and you just want to give it a go. Pretend, you know what, screw this one, this one's in bits. Let's go over to these two right here that I'm working on. <clears throat> so this is pretty much a smaller version, a tiny version of that big TX3 one. This is a Gravograph GK, so it's really old. Um, so these two markers here, so your your engraving point, whether it's the spindle type, like this one, see how it rotates. Oop. Yeah, I got my Allen key in there, but she rotates. That's what the motor's for. You have a pulley going from underneath the motor to there, and that gives it drive. Uh, then you use all your bits and everything. That's a science in itself. Getting those, uh, all the angles and everything like that on there. Not what I thought it would be. Just a simple. Simple grind and off you go. No, there's more to it than that. Um, but anyway, back to this one. This one's the diamond, diamond point engraver. So this is more for hard stuff. Um, yeah, no spin required. You just lower him down and start engraving away. So the diamond engraver gives you a finer engraving rather than your spindle type engraving. Gives you a thicker engraver and deep so you can adjust the depth of your engraving. So these are some of the things you can do with it. There's a skull and, you know, weird stuff like that. Um, whereas this one, with your diamond point, you can engrave hard stuff, which is good, like your knives and things like that. But there's just your letters that you can chuck in there. But then you can draw a picture. So that's my dog, Murphy. And he's a boxer. So I thought I'd give it a go at scraping on the diamond engraver on just some scrap. It's hard to see. It's too reflective. But my dog is in there. That's stainless steel, and it's it comes out really good if that's obviously not shiny. So I've got a shiny engraving with a shiny bit of steel. Not the best, but on old brass and things like that, or, or these type things, um, there's a horse. If it's going to focus, focus. I'm gonna slap you there. There's a horse. So that's your diamond point engraving, and that's the same as that. Just a picture, and you trace it. Use the tracer, do your best. But because these pantograph engravers work as a reduction, all of them as a reduction, there's no one-to-one, -one unless you get a one-to-one -one engraver, which is more for like creating more stamps or, you know, something special. Uh, they always work in a reduction. Working the reductions is right here on your scales. So there's two that you need to worry about. There's this one where your engraving point is. If that's on five, that means it's one-fifth the size of that. 
but if you change that to five, you have to change this one to five as well and get them as close to bang on as possible. Otherwise you end up with you know, one with a higher X or one with a higher Y or it's slightly skew width. You end up with something, do I have a demo? Here we go. Here's the skull. I was tracing the skull just to see what would happen if I started messing with all these bars here. See what would happen. I ended up with that. So you can see on the right hand side I got the skull right after I just put um, the numbers together. But as I started messing with the numbers on the left, you can see they went all skew with. Imagine what that would do with your letters or in this case a circle pretty much. So it looks like one of those skulls from Indiana Jones and the, the skull one. Anywho, I thought I'd show you just a few little tips there. I'll go in depth into these later on. So then if anybody's got a new Hermes Model GK or a, uh, this is a scripter, scripter model SM, MS, SM, yes, SM Deluxe. Um, that's a cool little machine. And then obviously the, the monster uh, Gravagraph TX3. So there's a TX and I think a TX3 or TXL. Anyway, that they're both pretty big, the TXs, but this is the biggest that you'll get. Anyway, stay tuned. Sorry for the big uh, distance in between my videos for all those that have subscribed, but stay tuned. I also wanted to show you a small little repair that I just had to do. I had the choice of creating, this is a rack. It's just plastic, but it's what that big engraver uses to move the entire pantograph assembly. I was contemplating just making one on the 3D printer, but couldn't be bothered because my computer is effed. Um, so what I like to do sometimes with these plastic gears and things, you just fill it with something that's stronger than plastic, which in this case is good old arrow dot, the good stuff. You fill that sucker up, and then <clears throat> file back in your teeth. It's not the most precise, but you'll see later when I put it together that it does work, it will work, and it'll be stronger than the plastic on the outside. And um, there you go, I don't have a blank spot, <coughs> excuse me, uh, in my rack. So I'm using, get to use the entire bed. Anyway, stay tuned guys.